Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. Over there is Adam Glenn. Look at those pearly whites smiling at me. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Dude, I, I good. Dude, I just got my first haircut in so long. It's my first haircut since the beginning of February, which is for a guy, it's pretty long. You know? So I like Wait, so you actually just, already have the haircut? Oh, thank you, dude. I'm just going like <laughs> all natural. This that is thing all, is this, huge. You got the big is, old hair. This is just straight humidity right now going on. It's been raining in New York for a while, so this is straight humidity hair. By the way, Dax, I so I I had a guest. Well, I met a guy the other day who'd be the greatest guest on our show. I wouldn't say the greatest, but a really, really interesting person to be on our podcast. All right. So every you got morning, my interest. Tell yeah, me yeah. more. Every morning I have like I have a lap. You know, I, I ride around the city. I kind of say hi to my people from my tipsters, my cops, my door guys, my my homeless guys to my psycho fans on the street. I kind of like say hi to everyone. It's like my morning lap. You know, it's like how yeah. you probably walk around the office and say hi to people in different cubicles. That's what yeah. I do. I go around New York City and just talk to these different UPS drivers and FedEx drivers and Amazon drivers. It's just it's very weird. So I stopped by this one hotel. And I start talking to the door guy. This other guy comes up and it's like, yo, they, I guess the guy used to be the security of the hotel years ago. And the guy comes up and is like, man, I haven't been here in forever. How things change. And they're talking about the hotel. And then they introduce me to the guy. The guy starts telling me stories about the hotel. Dex, it was incredible. He had a story about a rock star that came into the hotel. Now, he went into the hotel with... Um, he went into the hotel with two blonde girls, this rock star. He went to the blonde girls in the elevator with the security guy and says, all right, girls, which one of you, <laughs> I remember this is a kind of a PG 13 rated R podcast. He goes <laughs> to the girls in the podcast. He goes, which one of you is going to go down on me before I shower? And which one of you is going to go down on me after I shower, which I'm like, Whoa, what a line. And the girls, he says, the girls were kind of going back and forth, like who was going to do it. And then he had a story about um, these rock, other rock stars who were just wasted, who they had to like basically kick out of the hotel. And when the cops came to kick them out of the hotel, the cops like were such fans, they wound up like trying to hook them up at another hotel. Like, no, no, we got you, we got you. Then he had a story about another celebrity that you got arrested. Any of the names? I don't want to say the names because uh, I'll you save want, it for that. You want to have him come on and he can say the names? No, I don't want to get sued, Dax. Okay, that's why. Why did we, we get sued for someone saying who wants to go down on me in an elevator? You really want to? You really want to know who he said? Should I tell you the name? All right. It it was. Uh, you just say allegedly before it. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy told me it was allegedly. Um, it was Gene Simmons. Okay. Well, see, it's not that crazy. I mean, that's a crazy line to say to like two girls and then have yeah. the girls go back and forth. And then he had a story. I don't want to say this celebrity's name, but this one, because this one's rough. This one was like made, this one was so gnarly when I heard that, like it made me turn. But he said this one celebrity got out of jail. And when they got out of jail, they went right to this hotel to kind of get back into the groove of things. Like right from jail to the hotel, let's get you kind of figure things out. Okay. But while that person was checked into the hotel, another person brought in like a 16-year-old girl to Ugh. do whatever. Like basically like, hey, we'll bring you over a girl. And I was like, oh my God, that was – that like turned my stomach like stuff like that goes on. And then he had a story about – Martha uh, Stewart was crazy back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I wish it was Martha Stewart. Cause no, oh, I told you I don't, the person, was, I don't want to hear any story yeah, like that. It was so honestly, it changed my thoughts on this person. And um, but then tell me they said this. no. Tell me they said no. Thank you. I'd like an uh, of age person to come join me here in my hotel room. 
I wish I, I wish I didn't. I don't even know if I wish I didn't hear the story yeah. because I, I don't know. But, uh, but also they had a story about uh, Notorious B.I.G. was staying at the hotel. And when Biggie was staying at the hotel, you know, this is a different time. He lost the key to his hotel room. So he walked mm-hmm. down to the lobby and said, hey, I don't have the key to my room. So in order for him to say what was in the room, like, to, like they had to be like, all right, describe tell us what's in the room there. and describe what's in the room. And then the security guy walked Biggie up to the hotel room and he said that Biggie had said in the room he had a like a fish bowl, like a bowl full of girls' phone numbers. And then in his mini fridge, he had like a, a pound of ham, like a quarter pound of cheese, like a bread. Like he was just making sandwiches in his hotel room. I mean, it was just like so many other stories about Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown when they stay in the hotel. Okay, so and when are you getting them on? I well, I asked the guy come to the podcast. The guy was like, absolutely not. He's like, these people. <laughs> he's like, even though I'm retired, he's like, I do not want a private investigator coming after me because that's what these people do. Oh man, tell him. Yeah, to I know, stop I know. Being a but whiner such a great- and get on our podcast, dude. It was so like unique to hear his stories, and I was like, oh my. God, like just like the partying, dude. There, there are so many weird stories out there. So, you and I <laughs> were talking the other day. We were on the phone, just so random, by the way. Yeah, we were on the phone. You and I were on the phone the other day, just blabbing about something. I remember Jer- Jeremy Runner's name came up, and we started talking about like it's amazing that guy is here today, right? Like it's amazing that we can still have a conversation about Jeremy Renner because he was literally moments away from death. Like we could have easily had to have talked about stories of Jeremy Renner's death and his funeral and all the people that showed up to it. But fortunately he is here today. And then it got us thinking like, there's a lot of people actually in Hollywood and and there's probably stories out there that a lot of our listeners don't even know about, about these celebs that almost were killed or almost were not with us anymore. And they are luckily by the grace of God still on this planet. And I wanted to go through some of them and talk about their story and talk about how close these celebrities came to dying and somehow by a a miracle are here today. Um, So I want to get into that. We got a bunch of names here. Uh, And honestly, as we were doing some of the research, I, there's a couple on the list that I didn't even remember about, like it refreshed my memory of, Oh shit, they're here today and they almost died. Um, but obviously before that, let me let me read a review and then we'll jump into some of the celebrity near death experiences. Um, some of the biggest ones. We won't get into Jeremy Renner today. We'll leave him for another list just because his is still pretty recent, and I think a lot of people remember that one, but uh we'll get into some of the other ones. All right. Let me read a review. Woo, this is a big one. All right, five stars. This one is from Christine Fly. It says, I just love these young men and I look forward to the new episode. Uh, So then she starts again. I just love these two men. Look forward to their two episodes every week. I feel like I connect with them because they both feel genuine to me. Dax has the best laugh in the world, brings a smile to my face every time I hear him laugh. And when the jokes are really funny, it makes me laugh out loud too. Plus, I follow their Instagram Made my heart melt when Dax's son came and asked him to fix his hair before school. Dax then gave him a kiss on the cheek and sent him to school. So authentic and genuine, not staged. Adam has the best sarcastic humor out there. He His quips make me laugh. They do not offend. Give these guys a try. You'll love them. I've been working my way back through all their episodes. I love it when these two men, young men actually succeed. Best wishes for continued success. Christine from Palm City, Florida. Damn, that's a great, great, a great, great review, review, Christine. Thank you. That made thank me you. feel good. That right? made me feel good, Christine. Thank you for that. That was so sweet, so we're gonna, nice. Whenever we're having a bad day, we're going to go read Christine's uh, review. Yeah. Actually, I print the good reviews, and I leave them underneath my bed like a diary, and I just sometimes <laughs> read them. I'm doing like, those sad days, like those rainy days right now in New York City. Um, all right, on to Dax. By the way, before we get into the celebrities like near death experiences, have you had a near death experience at all? Yes, I was once um stung when I was in Mexico by this crazy scorpion type insect. Um, I was I was a dumbass, I was young, I was back in like college. I was 
driving through the middle of like nowhere Mexico on the way down to Guadalajara. And um, I stepped out of the car without shoes. Really. Oh. And it was literally like I, I was I think I just needed to go pee. I can't even remember why I got out of the car at that point. I stepped out of the car. I got stung by this creature. And like immediately, it was like, oh, it felt like it felt like a knife stabbing through oh. the bottom of my foot. And I remember like, oh, Jesus, what the fuck did I step on? And I remember getting down low and I saw this creature again. The best way I can describe it is like a gray looking scorpion with I wanted to say like yellow looking like claws or something and like a spiky tail. and. I was like, oh, damn, that really hurt. Whatever, we get back in the car, keep driving. And I'm with my friend's dad and his brother who didn't speak much English because I was going down there to meet like my 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 buddy. And anyway, um, they don't speak much English. My Spanish wasn't great at the time. And um, they ended up taking me to like a, a Red Cross. And I remember going into the Red Cross and I'm like getting let in there because my I feel like pain. I feel like I could literally feel the venom like coming up my leg as the oh. like time went by. So they take me into this Red Cross and there is blood all over the floor. Like someone had just gotten in a motorcycle accident and looked like they dragged him into the Red Cross. So I am laying on the bed next to like this bloody floor. I'm like, where the hell am I? They end up giving me some like basically ibuprofen and said, all right, you're going to be good to go. Don't worry about it. You got stung. You'll be good. We end up driving for, I would say, like an hour longer. Or, and I was like, guys, I, I am not feeling good. Like, I, I I need to go back to the hospital. We go back to the Red Cross. It's closed. They've <sighs> shut down the Red Cross now. Middle of the night. So then they start driving through the like little town that we're in. Again, middle of nowhere, Mexico. They start driving through the town to find the local doctor. So we end up going to this like local doctor's house. They get me like into his house, lay in the bed. They give me some kind of medication and I pass out for like a day. <laughs> wow. Don't even wake up. And I came back around after a while and the doctor basically said like, you would have died had you not come here so that I could give you like the anti-venom. That is, that can be a scorpion. Like that's insane. It's like, it was some weird ass bright tailed scorpion thing. Like I don't. Did I you don't see know. it or? Yeah, but I thought it was kind of dark. So it was like scurrying underneath. The best thing I can describe it as, like if you look up what's like a vinagrillo, it looks like a, this is, this is what it looked like. I don't know if that's exactly what it was, but if you look up a vinagrillo, it's like, it looks like the front of a scorpion and then this long spiky ass tail that looks like a, like a oh, giant stinger. Um, it was, it, it was crazy, dude. So yeah, I almost died in Mexico. That is pretty gnarly. I, I mean, you know, close, I wouldn't say even came close, but like drowning. It's the first time yeah. I remember surfing during a hurricane. I'm on, I, I swim. Am I like an incredible swimmer? No, but I could swim. You went, I was in the ocean. Surfing during a hurricane? It was like the days death, after. Death wish? It was like a few days after the hurricane where like the waves were still pretty big. And it was like how, mm. I didn't realize how powerful the ocean was. And this was only like a few years ago. And I brought a surfboard out there and there was, the beach was like busy because it was a nice day, but the waves were monster. And it was for like serious surfers. And I brought the surfboard out there. And I was like, all right, it's like boogie boarding. I thought like if you fall off a boogie board, you'll be okay. Surfing mm -hmm. could be the same thing. And I didn't realize like when a wave crashes and you see the white wash after the, a, a wave, that's not really water. That's air. And you can't really swim through that. So I brought this huge board out there. It was a long board. And um, me and my buddy went out there and I tried catching this wave. And uh, I get on the wave. And as soon as I got up, I realized how big – this wave was like the I, I didn't realize like I, it was like a 12 foot wave and I realized like man I should not be surfing this wave and I remember like everyone on the beach from a distance was like oh shit like this guy's about to try this and I didn't look good <laughs> at all like I could surf but I'm not great and as yeah. soon as I got off I, I knew like I was crashed gonna fall hard and I just 
fell like in the air where like I heard everyone watching me fall. Like I, I could <laughs> like hear the them gasp like, oh, of man, everyone. This guy. <laughs> and I fell. And then all of a sudden I started to panic. Like I tried to swim and you can't swim in the air, like the wash. So I'm trying to swim and I'm not going anywhere. I'm was just it going like down. taking you in circles? It wasn't even taking me in circles. I was just like going down and I was wasting so much energy trying to swim. And I was underwater for a pretty decent amount of time. And I just remember being freaked out. And luckily another surfer came over and was like, hey, man, you got to get out of here. Like You're not – you are not for – and he just kind of like pushed me in the right direction, like helped me like towed me back in. But I mean – it was just uh, like I was out of breath. I was, especially when I was out there, I didn't realize how strong the ocean was. I was like 20 seconds from like yelling out like, help, help. And I was going to yeah. be that guy, but, um, which would have been really bad. Um, but, uh, I want to get into celebrities cause we're just some F listers. I, if we want to give it that, maybe G. <laughs> um, uh, so I would like to kind of get into some celebrities. So Dax, tell me about a celebrity that had a near death celebrity experience. I'm going to go with someone that I don't think most people know she had a near death experience that it it was back, I would say, so many years ago that it wasn't really overly documented. But Charlize Theron had a near death experience. She almost died on the set of one of the movies that she was filming um, back years and years ago. This was like. 2004 2005 she was filming this movie called eon flux and this was kind of like after monster had done really well right she got the oscar for monster and then she was like cool i'm gonna be the next big star on the planet and then she did this movie and it like tanked her career and she almost died at the same time uh but this it was like this 2005 sci-fi film um and it didn't have a big, but it would have like $52 million budget, whatever. And she was filming it, but she was doing all of her own stunts as, as a part of the movie. She, it was a very action packed movie. It was based on this like animated series. And during one of the stunts uh, where she was wrapped up kind of in this like wire rigging that was supposed to like yank her up in the air, something went wrong. I, I don't know what exactly went, something went wrong. And according to her, she said, the wire snapped and she landed right on her neck and oh. she was basically paralyzed for a week. Um, and then she said it was a, you know, this freak accident could have left her paralyzed for life. Like it was that bad. And after the initial paralysis wore off, she was like for months had to spend time trying to recover, underwent intensive physical therapy to regain her strength her mobility. Uh, she did end up going back to finish filming the movie after a, a, an extended period of time. And then the movie hit the box office and just did not do well. But like, think about that. We were that close to losing Charlize Theron because of an accident, a freak accident on set. And I think a lot of people don't know about this one. Like, this is not highly yeah. publicized. So, Dax, let me ask you this. When there is an accident on set, obviously she's yeah. working, there's insurance on the film. How does that work? How does the insurance, does she, can she sue or do they uh, she settle? Could totally, or? She could totally sue um, because of the accident. I think a lot of celebrities, and we may get into this because there's another one coming up on the list where it was a celebrity that was severely, severely injured on set, chose not to sue because they're concerned it could blacklist them from in the industry, right? Like, oh yeah, dude, oh I be... they they went after the big movie <sighs> the, the movie network or the big studio, you know, and she Studios. was that was a Paramount movie at the time. So if she went after Paramount, would she then get roles? down the road so i think that it weighs into this and um we'll, we'll get into the other star that i know definitely didn't go after them i'm sure that their insurance took care of her and got her all fixed up and all that but you never know what the long-term effects could be right um through all of this i think the other big story with Charlize is she almost died as a kid and this was not movie mean? related uh this was uh, a story about her dad almost killed her when she was young. So, you know, she grew up in South Africa and she had talked about this in like an interview she did with town and country magazine a while back, 
But she basically said when she was growing up, her dad was a massive alcoholic and she, she didn't even really know what he was like, not drunk because he was drunk so much. But Charlize said that one night her dad was on, on a tear, super drunk, um, was trying to bust through the door to get to her and her mom and had a gun and was trying to like bang through her. She would, she described the whole situation as she was leaning up against the door with her mom, trying everything they do to keep him out of the room. He shot three times through the door. Like he had a gun on him. He shot three times, almost hit Charlize and her mom. Luckily they um, didn't get hit. uh, But her mom actually took the, I don't know if it was the same gun, different gun, shot her dad, killed her dad. And did not go to jail or anything because it was self-defense protecting her and her daughter. Uh, but her Charlie Sterling's mom killed her dad. That is gnarly. Crazy, right? I keep saying gnarly, but this is just these stories just for me. Like they're that's a wild thing. I mean, I think she's I'm sure she, that's gotta be pretty traumatic. And it's dude, super tra- and I, she was ever, 15 at the time. So she's wow. old enough to realize like sort of what's going on. Yeah, I mean and that's and- to walk around with that, that's tough. That's a lot of heavy weight to have on your shoulders the rest of your life. Change the subject. I've seen <laughs> Charlize in, th- in person. Man, she is gorgeous. First time I saw her was at JFK Airport. I remember she came out, and I was like, whoa, who is this girl? Like, this is like she, – she, she's she had like a really good build. She's like a good height where she's not mm-hmm. too tall, but she's not short. And I was like, who is – like she like stood out at JFK Airport. And then I saw her in September, and she's one of those girls where she, if she was like not an actress, I mean, you could say this about anyone, but she has the type of look where she could not just be an actress; she could like work for like a marketing firm, well, and that, you'd just be a like marketing firm. I was going to say a model. You went marketing firm. <laughs> no, like if she had like some like white collarish type job where she worked at some sort of like New York City desk job, and she walked in, you'd be like. I would listen to what she has to say. It's just like, she's got this like presence where like confidence meets beauty meets like that. I like that. You're right there. Like, she's literally she, one of the most beautiful people on the planet. And you're like, yeah. So if she was working a desk job, <laughs> like she's <laughs> yeah. the face of like Dior and you're like, I could see her, you know, just slanging taxes for sure. <laughs> but she's, she has a different type of like look where it's not, she, it's not like it's like forced, you know. We see that a lot of Hollywood where you have to put on like a sexy outfit or some sort of like a lot of makeup. She's just like, whoa. And then obviously she's talented behind that, which obviously helps out for her career. But great transition I did from seeing how her dad, you know, face her mom killed her dad. And then I'm like, yeah, she's hot. I'm like, oh, I'm such an <laughs> idiot. I'm such well, an listen, idiot. Listen, we are lucky to. I'm have just lucky. Exactly, we are lucky to have her. I'm glad she's. She's here, but that's a, that's a, I didn't know that much about the whole family situation. I mean, obviously we knew she she was, I know she speaks like two, she speaks English and she, she, I think she speaks the language of Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Yeah. Yeah. I know she speaks that language. Dax, who else? um, What other celebrity had a near death experience? Uh, Michael J. Fox almost died while filming a really dangerous stunt for Back to the Future. A lot of people don't know about this story, but this was for Back to the Future 3. Um, if you if you think back to the movie, uh, Marty McFly had traveled back in time to 1885 to save Doc Brown. Of course, that was you know the premise of all the movies. Um, but he was going up against this outlaw called Buford Mad Dog Tannen. And in the scene, the, he's ordered to basically hang uh, Marty McFly. And the, the scene required that Michael J. Fox perform the stunt himself because of the way it was filmed. It was like a really up close shot of his face. And so apparently they tried to film the scene where like the apple box that he was standing on, you couldn't see it. And, but they just felt like it didn't look realistic. It didn't look like a man who was swinging there hanging by his neck. Right. So he's like, all good. I can do this. I, you know, I, I can make this look more realistic and so they were like, all right, well, let's rehearse it. And the, it, the rehearsal went really well. He was able to get his hand like in between the rope and his neck so he wouldn't become asphyxiated during the filming. And the first two times they filmed it, everything went well. He was able to get his hand in there. He was able to like not get himself choked. 
Well, on the third time, um, I guess the third take, basically he didn't calculate the position of his hand properly. The rope clenched around his neck. And because of the scene, it's supposed to look like he's choking. No one knew. They just kept filming. And he's actually getting choked out by this rope around his neck to the point that Michael passed out. He became unconscious. And um, and so obviously that was when everyone knew, oh, shit, something's really happening. They ended up cutting him down once they realized something was wrong um, and that it had basically blocked his corroded artery and which caused him to pass out. Um, But all in all, he was good. He was able to bounce back after that. But again, near death experience um, from filming a movie and a stunt gone wrong. Yeah, I mean you know wonder why these films have such insurance but can you imagine watching that on set and being part of the crew and seeing michael j fox struggle and think he's acting but then like look back like oh wait that was real like afterwards like oh i'm so sorry you have to go apologize like i didn't know that you were struggling there and that seems so painful and so i mean for him to pass out mm-hmm. oh, like you're sitting God. there like I can imagine the director oh, and everyone like just after that just like, all right, let's call it a week because that just yeah. And well, then you go, which one do we use? Like, which scene do we use? Because <laughs> the one where he's actually <laughs> choking is going to look the most realistic out of all of them. But then, do you want to put that one in the movie because you know that he almost died filming that? You know what's interesting? Um, Sylvester Stallone. Do you remember in Rocky Four, the, he almost died getting punched by Dolph Lundgren? And they kept that punch in the movie. Because, no way. Yes, they kept it in the movie. And you got to remember, Sil- Sylvester was actually um, one of the obviously big producers and the big star of it. But years later, he came out and said that in that scene, Dolph had like just knocked him so hard that that night he had to go to the emergency room. His blood pressure went up to 260. Uh, he was ready to leave this planet and uh, woke up in the hospital. And then he goes back and and looks at the, this like punch that really took him out. And he goes, we got to leave that in the movie. That was the best punch of the movie. We can't take that out. I mean, that is to me is amazing. Yeah. I mean, smart move to say, keep it in because it does actually, in a way it's good for business. It helps promote the movie because you could talk Mm -hmm. about that part when you're doing press for movie. Similar to like Sasha Barcon and Rebel Wilson, but he didn't talk about this till like my butt. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) he didn't talk about this till like years and years and years later. So they didn't even use this to promote the movie. I mean, it was so bad that I guess they were filming in Canada. He had to take like an emergency low altitude flight back to California to get medical treatment. Like that's how bad it was. Yeah, I'm surprised stunt people in films aren't spoke about more because of the the risk and the situation. I mean, a stunt person always goes to work. I have to imagine or leaves work hurt. There's no like good day and uh, it's difficult what they do. So, but for Stallone to kind of go through this, that I never knew that I wish now, like I want to watch the scene and watch that punch happen. I know. Like, Um, why wouldn't they talk about it? Like you almost died. That would have made even, I mean, it already, it grossed what 300 million in the first month alone. Like that was a huge success for him. But how many more people would go watch it just to see that one moment? Because back then when that was released, you didn't have all these clips online and all that. You would have had to go to the theater to really see that moment. Yeah, but I also think during that time it was a different PR thing where maybe people didn't realize that was kind of a good marketing yeah, technique. Yeah, yeah, that was, you know, we should yeah. kind of learn about these things now. It was, it was a different type of marketing now. And also they didn't really need that help anymore. First of all, it was Rocky. And also, it was, you know, Stallone. You have A-list stars. They would just go to a Planet Hollywood and promote the movie, and the movie would make $100 million. It was just the biggest yeah. thing in the world during that time. Are you a big Stallone guy? Like, I feel like he – obviously, Rocky was huge. Rambo was great. But outside Rocky and Rambo, should Stallone have – did he do any other really legendary films? Hmm. I mean, obviously, Rocky's a – uh, an iconic I'm trying to like think movie franchise. What I, I mean, those are the Rambo. two that I obviously. Yeah, I mean that's like when I think of 
him, those are that's the movies that I think of. Yeah, I mean, Whereas, Demolition like, Man was a good me, movie. Yeah, like if you give me the name Tom Hanks, I can think of a hundred films that the guy's been in that are unbelievable. No, he's just he's those are what I know him for. Yeah, no, I'm surprised he didn't do more films. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of who else had these like near death experiences that I was thinking about the other day. Oh, I mean, obviously we we have to bring up Lamar Odom, right? We like, were there when it happened. We were covered we were all there. That. We were a part of all of that when it went down, breaking the story. But Lamar Odom's near-death experience is probably one of the most memorable moments, at least in my career. I got to imagine in your career as well. And for people don't remember how bad that was or like weren't into entertainment news at the time, the guy was moments away from death. Um, this all was this spiraling effect. If you remember when he and Chloe um, early, I mean, what year was that? That was, I trying to remember what year. I don't remember, but he, he was on top of the world with the Lakers and keeping up with the Kardashians was the number one reality show on the planet. And like, he was basically straddling this like sports empire, reality empire. He, everything was so great until drugs really started to like take over his life. He was cheating on his wife. He was, um, like just doing all kinds of crazy crap. And then right when him and Chloe split, she basically kicked him out of the house. Said, I can't do this anymore. There's too many stories coming out. You're cheating on me left and right. You're doing drugs. Like, I don't want to have any part of it. She kicked him out of the house and he ended up going to the love ranch in Las Vegas, which was a, a brothel. He just wanted to escape it all. And he just wanted to have fun. And basically he went on a four day bender where he was found unresponsive after suffering 12 seizures, six strokes, and his heart stopped twice. Like, unbelievable that he is here today to still talk about that incident. And I don't, he doesn't take it for granted. He knows that he's lucky to be here. Um, he's had a lot of trauma in his life. I remember his mom died at a really young age. I think he was like 12 or something at the time. He struggled a lot with that throughout the years. I think that's why he would lean to doing drugs. He did a lot of cocaine, um, admitted to that, smoked weed, all of that kind of stuff to kind of escape that pain from his childhood. But he had said that when he got to Cedar sinai they said, you are a walking miracle. Like, it is amazing that you are here today. If, Adam, I don't know about you, but like, when I think about this whole incident, I in my head are the photos that I remember purchasing for TMZ, which is him like on the gurney. What were in those photos though? Yeah. So it was him. Oh my God. Getting, so they, they took him from a hel the helicopter in Vegas, gave him a helicopter ride to Cedars and they are pulling him out of the helicopter. And Chloe was there and they pull him out of the helicopter and wheel him into the hospital. But Chloe is right next to him after she got the call. And you're just, you're like, holy shit, is this guy going to survive or not? That's the image that I have in my head of this whole incident. Um, he, he basically says he doesn't have any memory of taking drugs that day, let alone like near lethal doses. Um, he had to complete a month long stint in rehab back in 2016. Um, he says he still drinks, but can't remember the last time he's done cocaine. Like he, he's like, I'm clean of cocaine. He will still smoke with marijuana to help with anxiety. But he, he did say also that he did like three, four, five ketamine treatments as part of his recovery program. And it helped with his anxiety, but he, he seems to be doing much better. I feel like I'm seeing him a lot more these days. He's doing a lot of charity work. I know he just started up a podcast with Caitlyn Jenner. And so he is, again, amazing that that man is still on this planet. Do you remember how big of a star Lamar Odom was during that time? It's weird. Like we, we go back and forth, like how big stars were at a time. And for a period of time, for a few years, Lamar Odom was one of the biggest stars out there. I wouldn't say in the world, but out there. And then when he almost died, which... I don't remember the exact date either. I think it was in the afternoon or something when I heard this story. And mm -hmm. the thing I, I was so happy about is that it wasn't in New York or like in the tri-state area because oh, then I would have to cover it. I thought you were, were going to say like, it was so happy he was alive. No, I was, no, I was happy, happy I didn't have to work. But, <laughs> uh, but when the story was breaking, you didn't. There yeah. was 
there was more thought that he wasn't going to make it. We were like, yeah, it, we were preparing ourselves for the worst. I think as far I as covering the story. Surprised if every news station across the country or web- website had the story Lamar written. Odom has died, like re- pre-written article ready to go, because it was that bad that at any moment you're like, because he was in like a coma for a while. Like, I think that everyone was prepared for that news and then he came back to life. Yeah, I don't think people realize that when a story like that happens and it's such like a close to death experience and where mm-hmm. the outlets are already preparing for the worst. So they write up the story and they're ready to push enter. So mm-hmm. when they, they officially find out he dies, boom, they could just post a story right away. And it's already, yeah, it's got all, it's, it's all drafted, it's ready, it's all drafted and ready. They have like a little bio about them, the, the, the highs and the lows. So, but there was there any other, you know, Dex, again, you were during, you were covering that story pretty extensively at the time. Was there any other little takeaways you have from that experience from the Lamar Odom situation exactly? I think I was just always impressed that even though him and Chloe were in such a bad spot, that she was right there by his side. And yeah. I thought I was, I was always impressed with that, that she, she was able to separate herself and her anger towards him in a moment that he really needed her by his side. And again, I, you know, it's not like they worked out afterwards or something like that, but I was just always, I've always been impressed with Chloe and the way she handles herself publicly and, um, she does a she does a good job. I feel like she's always picked the wrong guys. However, um, you know it is what it is. But I I don't know. I was just really impressed with her throughout all of it. Same thing goes sort of with Kim. You know the way she handles the 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 downfalls the crazy of their Kanye. relationships. Yeah, the the crazy yeah. parts of the relationship. And I don't think we kind of talk about that stuff enough and give them enough credit. Um, you know. Sorry, can I talk about one last story before yeah, yeah. we kind of run out of time here? One story that, again, I don't know if a lot of people know about, but Kristen Chenoweth almost died on the set of The Good Wife and in a really gnarly accident while she was filming. Um, basically, she was on set and this lighting rig swung down or crashed down on her, smashing her between like the lighting rig and the concrete and she ended up having a bunch of severe injuries including a cracked rib a skull fracture a broken nose and teeth nerve tissue and muscle damage uh she ended up having to leave the show because the incident was so bad that she like couldn't work for a while and they had to keep the show going um but she did end up basically talking about it at a certain point saying that, you know, it's funny was that her weave was one of the things that actually saved her life, that uh, her hair extension, because it was tied in so tightly to her head, that when her head cracked against the curb, it left left the seven inch gap that what she would have just like bled out a pair, uh, uh, like a, she would have bled out. And because the weave was keeping it together tied together she didn't bleed out yeah <laughs> so so oh. she said she owed a lot of her or her life to this weave that kept her head together which was kind of funny and crazy at the same time that's yeah that's pretty weird you know there was this is a uh, sort of random but i don't know if it was a near-death experience but it was a live watching i, I saw it live of a celebrity mm-hmm. getting seriously hurt and um it was Brett Michaels during the Tony Awards when he ran off stage and the curtain, the wall, they had this like wall oh, yeah, coming down smashed him. And, yeah. it's, and he didn't see, and it wasn't his fault because the wall came kind of come down and he hit it so hard. He fell back and everyone was in pain watching that. I was like, Oh my gosh. And uh, I, I don't know how that thing settled. If there was a loss, I think his face, but I mean, I don't think he was going to die from it, but mm-hmm. there could have been some, uh, there could have been some, serious damage that kind of came from it um but yeah, yeah but that channel was story you know, and, you know and the thing the thing about her is she had a lot of anxiety she had a lot of depression after the whole thing where she had to basically find herself again but 
she was the one I was talking about earlier saying that she didn't end up suing anyone because she was worried about the repercussions of suing the the people behind the production that it would get her blackballed from Hollywood like her friends, people in the industry were like, no, 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 don't sue them. You'll, you'll ruin your career. And she looks back and she's like, screw that. I shouldn't have been concerned about my career. I should have been concerned about myself at that point. And she tells people like, don't, don't let your fear get a, you know, get the best of you in those moments. Like she deserved to get something out of it. Like Tracy Morgan, you remember when he got hit by the, that Walmart truck? I had friends and, in the car who were in the car in the accident with him. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, um, I two, I knew two guys who were in the car. One of them was able to kind of, every, I mean, everyone was kind of hurt. One of them was not as bad hurt. Why mm -hmm. or how I don't know, but the other one, um, was seriously hurt. And uh, um, yeah, man, it changed his life. Where he was it, it a was, comic who was. It, you know, a working comic, but not doing well. But yeah, it was yeah. for a long time. Man, that was that was almost I mean, like that a was, year of like, how's he, he doing? Had, uh, he, I mean, he, for people that don't remember, he was in like this kind of limo bus type situation. Um, and a Walmart semi truck hit him and they flew off the road. And I remember he had like a brain injury. He broke almost every bone in his face, his ribs it destroyed his femur um and he was left in really bad shape almost died from that but i i was just gonna say he went after walmart for that whole situation and there was rumors that he walked away with a 90 million dollar settlement from that whole thing which makes sense it derailed his entire career the guy was making tons of money he was really successful and so you look at what his career trajectory would have been he probably would have made 90 million dollars had not walmart's truck ran him off the road you know it sounds yeah, like I mean, a crazy amount of money but he suffered a lot from that i see tracy morgan often in, in new york city and you know he still doesn't move well he moves a little slower mm -hmm. um but I'll tell you what he doesn't even move because every time i see him he's in a new car a new lamborghini a ferrari like I don't even know the names of these cars, some Italian sort of sports car, the guy <laughs> Rolls Royce Bentley, like he's got that type of thing. In fact, uh, one of the other guys who was in the accident, he obviously I'm sure was involved in the lawsuit and received some sort of payout. He himself also has like a nice SUV. I think he bought a, a property from a few properties for himself as investment properties, bought a family. Of, uh, a, so everyone there got paid. In fact, I actually thought he, I heard the stories about Tracy getting 90 million. He hasn't confirmed the design because they settled. Um, so we mm -hmm. really don't know exactly how much he got, but I thought he somehow might even got more money than 90 million. I don't know. Never it's know. just, oh, well, I, I yeah, feel like we have such a public law and yeah, let, let's do a part two of this because we're out of time and there's other people I want to talk about. I want to talk about Harrison Ford. I want to talk about Jeremy Renner. I want to talk about Kevin Hart. Like Eminem. There's more there, Eminem. There's more people that we are lucky that they are in our presence today and did not die from overdoses or plane crashes. And I mean, Travis Barker, we got to talk about. I mean, there's so many more. So let's do a part two um, to talk about some of these other people. But uh, thank you again. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you to... Michael J. Fox for being here. Thank you to Charlize Theron for surviving. <laughs> Thank you to Kristen Tracy Chenoweth. Morgan. For more, I mean, all of Lamar you guys. We are, yeah, we are so happy that you guys are still with us today. Um, anyway, thank you guys for listening. Make sure you join our private Facebook group, Off the Record. Um, that would be a good place to be like, oh, we want you guys to talk about so-and-so that had a near-death experience. And uh, we'll add them into the list for round two. But we love hearing what you guys have to say and uh, your feedback from our, our podcast, what makes you laugh, what makes you cringe. All of those things, we're reading them in our private Facebook group. Um, and then you can obviously follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of the things, YouTube. There is a video aspect of our show up on YouTube. If you search Hollywood Raw, you can follow Adam at Adam Glenn. You can follow me at Dax Holt. We are also 
on all the social platforms out there, um, trying to give you guys glimpses to our life. So anyway, thank you guys for following. There'll be a part two. We'll get that out to you when we can. Later. See ya. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.